It's almost autumn, and you know what that means. The air is getting crisper. I am preparing to eat a dump truck full of apple cider donuts, and <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh is in the news for allegedly putting his penis in a place it wasn't invited. <laughs> in case you forgot, and honestly, who could blame you for trying to? This time last year, Republicans fast-tracked this poison ivy leaguer to the Supreme Court, <laughs> despite credible accusations of sexual assault. According to new information laid out in the education of Brett Kavanaugh, written by New York Times reporters Robin Pogrebin and Kate Kelly. It turns out the Senate and FBI didn't dot their I's or cross their T's or give a shit about a thorough investigation. Serious questions are being raised about the FBI investigation into Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh could have stood up and said, my integrity is so important, the integrity of the Supreme Court is so important, I demand the FBI complete a full and exhaustive investigation. Instead, he allowed the White House to curtail the FBI so that they only interviewed 10 people and they didn't look into other possible allegations. And now here we are. On one hand, investigations aren't really the Senate's strong suit. It's why they never cracked the case of who keeps shitting in Tom Cotton's briefcase. <laughs> but the FBI is supposed to be much better at it. One of the most frustrating parts of the book is when it explains how one of Kavanaugh's accusers, Deborah Ramirez, also had a credible accusation, but it was not thoroughly investigated by the FBI. Thanks to White House and Senate limits, the Bureau mostly focused on Christine Blasey Ford's allegation. But Deborah Ramirez's claim that Kavanaugh thrust his penis in her face at a dorm party at Yale turns out to be highly credible. Ramirez offered up at least 25 potential corroborating witnesses, and the FBI didn't speak to any of them. Some of them even reached out to the FBI to offer statements, and the FBI didn't call them back. Even worse, this was their voicemail. Hi, this is the FBI. We're crazy busy, so leave your digits after the beep, and we'll call you back on the flippity-flop. Boop. <laughs> Just kidding. That was me. Kelly and Pogerman found at least seven people who heard about Kavanaugh exposing his gross downstairs to Ramirez, long before he exposed his gross upstairs to the rest of us. <laughs> the journalists also uncovered another allegation about a different classmate. The details of this allegation are that a, a male um, fellow student at Yale came forward during the confirmation process and said that as a student, he had seen Brett Kavanaugh, drunk, expose himself at a party to another woman um, and force, and I apologize for this description, his genitalia upon her. First off, this fucking sucks. Secondly, <laughs> you're the news, just say penis. Why are you saying genitalia? That sounds like 20 dicks. It sounds like a rat king of dicks. In fact, everyone seems to be skirting around the word. Shoving his genitalia. His genitals. His genitals. Brett Kavanaugh's private parts. His <laughs> crotch. No, don't say crotch. I'm sorry, that just sounds wet. Meanwhile, <laughs> always the before photo, Ted Cruz had this inspirational piece of advice. The American people heard it, and at the end of the day, the American people made a judgment that, that the evidence wasn't there, the corroboration wasn't there. At some point, they just have to, to let the anger go. Oh, should I, should I, should I let the anger go? Should I calm down? Should I smile more? Okay. Shut the fuck up, bitch. The American people didn't get to make a judgment on this. The Senate did, and they decided not to do a proper investigation. So yeah, as long as an alleged sexual assaulter is ruling on laws about my body, I remain vexed. It is clear that Republicans still don't care how hard it is to come forward about this stuff. This new allegation wasn't brought forward by the alleged victim, but by a witness. According to the book, the woman declined to be interviewed, and her friends say she doesn't remember it happening. Information which the New York Times initially left out of its published article. They later added it in an editor's note, but leaving out that detail, as well as their god-awful tweet sharing the story, were huge fuck-ups by the New York Times. This is a bigger fuck-up than when Will Shorts used his own email password as a clue for the crossword. <laughs> the new corroborations of Ramirez's account make her allegations more credible than ever. But the New York Times' fuck-ups created a way for Fox News to deflect, focusing on editorial errors instead of the information. Bombshell correction overnight by, guess who, the New York Times. Walking back its report or clarifying an accusation of sexual misconduct against Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. 
The correction says the so-called victim has no recollection of the decades-old incident. So the victim doesn't remember. Interesting that Fox and Friends believes the victim who doesn't remember, but not the ones who do. Though, to be fair, I can't recall Fox and Friends ever doing anything in good faith or anything good at all, except that one time Tucker Carlson fell asleep on air. <laughs> I don't think we're being good co-hosts right now. Can you get a shot on? <laughs> good to see you. <clears throat> Welcome to Fox and Friends. I've always wondered how Tucker Carlson sleeps, and the answer is on television. It's weird and depressing to realize it's been nearly a year since Kavanaugh was confirmed, and it's horrible to see, even if stronger evidence against him continues to come out that his allies will keep brushing it away like it's a housefly. I'm just kidding. Ted Cruz doesn't shoo away houseflies. Yum! <laughs>